In this video, I'll be introducing some more examples of manifolds. The first example I'm going to t tell you about is the product manifold. So if M and N are manifolds, then M cross N is a manifold. Okay, so they're Cartesian, the Cartesian product of two manifolds is a manifold, and more specifically, of dimension, the dimension of M plus the dimension of N. So the intuition here is that if I have one manifold, say this two-dimensional manifold right here, I'll call it N, and I have another manifold, M, and I look at their product space. All of this, all of the pairs of points, one coordinate in an M, one coordinate in an N, this is still going to be a manifold. And it's going to be a manifold of the sum of their dimensions. So for example, if I have, say, this right here is R2, and this M right here is R, their product R2 cross R is a manifold and it's going to be a manifold of dimension 3. And in fact, it's just going to be equivalent to R3. Let's prove this, and it's really quite simple because the first condition says that around any point, I can find an open subset that's homeomorphic to an open subset of Rn. So suppose x, y is an element of m cross n. So x is an element of m, y is an element of n. And we can use that fact to our advantage because then x is going to be an element of some chart, u phi, and y is going to be an element of some chart, v psi, by the fact that m and n are manifolds. And so what I can do is then I could say that x, y is just going to be an element of the chart u cross v, phi cross psi. Now phi cross psi is just going to apply phi to the first coordinate, psi to the second coordinate, like this, okay? It's just going to take in x, y, I'll put phi of x, phi of y, psi of y, and it's very easily seen to be a homeomorphism, and u cross v is just a basis element of the product topology, so that's obviously an open set. <laughs> so that's the first condition, around any point you can find a chart. The second condition is that it's Hausdorff. This is a product of Hausdorff spaces, that's Hausdorff. Okay, number three, uh, it has a countable basis. Well, M and N have countable bases, and so I just take the product basis, and the product basis of two countable bases is countable, so yes. From this, we can easily see that the finite product of manifolds is still going to be manifold, because if I had m1 and m2, I can take their product, that's still going to be manifold. This is a manifold, and I could take its product with another manifold. Well, this is going to be a manifold, I can take its product with another manifold, so on and so forth, just as long as it's finite, or else that process wouldn't work. Okay, so a nice easy example is the n torus, tn, and that's just going to be the circle multiplied with itself n times. Okay, so for example, T1, the one-dimensional torus, is just going to be the circle. T2 is going to be S1 crossed with itself, and it's actually going to be homeomorphic to a donut, like this. Although it might not seem entirely obvious, here's an animation to help you. Here, you see a point on S2 on the XY plane. Let me go up, draw in the xy plane so that you're able to tell. So here, you can see it's just a point going around the circle on the xy plane. Now, this is S1. Let's go ahead and add in another circle. So here, you see our black point going around the xy plane. It's just going around in a circle around the xy plane. Now I have this new green point, which is going around a new circle around like this. So that green point is going to be given two coordinates. This black point's coordinate, which is going to be a point on S1, and the coordinate of this new green circle, its coordinate on that. And that will 
give you a unique a unique green point like that. So here you can see that it's just going around in another circle. So that other circle is going to be the second S1 in the product. So the first S1 is going to be this black circle that's just moving around like that. The second circle is going to be this green circle. And this is what the product is. This is the product. But guess what? This right here traces out a very specific shape. And so let me go ahead and show you what it traces out. It traces out this shape. So the product of S1 with itself, given in this weird sort of way, is this weird shape. But And as you can see, you can see circles like that, and you can see a circle around like this. So this donut right here is homeomorphic to S1 cross S1, which is the two torus. Now let's move on to something a little more abstract. So say that V is an n-dimensional real vector space. So it's a finite dimensional real vector space, and let's give it a basis, um, E1 to En. So E1 to En is a basis. And now let's equip it with the topology such that the map plus from V cross V into V, so it takes in two vectors, outputs a vector, and the scalar multiplication that takes in a real number, a vector, and outputs a vector, scalar multiplication, both of these have to be continuous. They don't have to be homeomorphisms, they just have to be continuous. Now let's look at the map E that brings you from Rn into V. And this map will rely on this basis because we define it as e to the x as just the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, the ith coordinate of x, times ei, the ith basis. So this is obviously going to be continuous due to the fact that these are continuous. So that this is a composition of just continuous maps. How do I know that e inverse? is continuous. Well, E inverse of a vector V is just going to be its components, V1 to Vn. It's just its representation in the real numbers. And uh, I'll leave it to you to verify that this is continuous only knowing these two. I have it that V, the vector space, under the map E inverse is a chart. Because V is an open set, E inverse is obviously going to be a homeomorphism due to the fact that E is a homeomorphism so that this is a chart and that's it that's all we need because every point is contained within V and the fact that it's Hausdorff is given by the scalar multiplication with R and the fact that it's second countable is given by the fact that it's a real vector space. What easily follows from this is that matrices M by N matrices on R are also manifolds, are M times N dimensional manifolds. Why? Because, well, there are going to be N selections for the top row, M down, so there's going to be N by N real numbers. You can just translate that very easily into R M times N. So the reason right here is because if I have, say, like uh, a matrix 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 3, 4, 3, right? I could just represent this as a tuple. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 3, 4, 3. And then that's just a nice homeomorphism. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove that the linear functions between any two real vector spaces is also going to be a manifold. So I have the set of linear maps between V, a finite dimensional real vector space, and W. So this is the set of phi from V to W that is linear. Okay, and the way we do this is just by a homeomorphism of this with matrices in N. So if I say V has a basis, E1 to En, and W has a basis, E prime 1 to E prime M, then I can go ahead 
and represent phi as just a matrix A, which is an M by N matrix of R, by the fact that this, this is given a natural structure as the matrices M by N matrices of R are given, then we're good. And that's it.